Good morning, everyone. I am your host, Cecile Mitchell, from the Grenada Airports Authority. Mrs. Natasha Thomas, District 6 Education Officer, Civil Aviation Officer, Mr. Marlon Carter, CEO of the Grenada Airports Authority, Mr. Edgar Stephen, Director of Operation, Ms. Mrs. Christina Joseph, the staff, management and staff of the Grenada Airports Authority, teachers from the GBSS, other students and teachers from various schools, members of the press, invited guests, or virtual audience. It is my privilege to welcome you to the Grenada Airports Authority Career Fair 2023 in collaboration with the Ministry of Education as we comm commemorate International Civil Aviation Day. We now invite Pastor Lambert Paul to lead us in prayer. And this will be followed by a message, welcome remarks from Ms. Natasha Thomas, District 6 Education Officer. Good morning, everyone. Could you please stand as we approach the throne of God? Let's bow our heads as we reverence God's presence. Father in heaven, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus. We thank you, dear God, for life. We thank you for being here today. We pray, oh God, in a very special way uh, that whatever will be transpired here today will be a means of inspiring, encouraging, and motivating the individuals who are here. Oh God, we come this morning claiming that every good and every perfect gift to come from our Father above and today, dear God, we come seeking your gift. I pray, dear God, even as the students listen and as they participate in whatever will be transpired, I pray, dear God, that you will grant them wisdom. And if by chance they lack any, you said in James chapter 1 and verse 5, that if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who give it to all men freely. And I pray, dear God, that you will do so today in a very special way. I pray, oh God, as they sit and as they listen, that whatsoever will be articulated will be so clear that they will be inspired to, uh, to have the drive, dear God, to want to achieve greater and even to join into the aviation department. I pray, dear God, that you will be with them. I pray, oh Father, that you will be with their family and their friends and those that they mingle with, that they will also be means of motivation and encouragement to them so that God, they will have the desire to aspire and to persevere in the desired field. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, O oh God, for the Grenada Airport Authority with such great initiative. I pray, O oh God, that it will not go on deaf ears. It would not go unnoticed, but it will have the impact that they desire it to have. We give you thanks and praise the God, and we pray in a very special way that you will continue to be with those who are on their way, grant them traveling mercies, so they too can reach here safely. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. And also that God will look mostly to the day when you shall come, and we'll be able to see you face to face. As we wait, dear God, help us to be prepared and to make all the necessary moves in our lives so when you come, we can be saved. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. You can have your seats. Mrs. Thomas, you can come. I pause to recognize members of the protocol team, manager, CEO, Mr. Stevens. Principal, teachers, students, good morning. Good morning, everyone. It is indeed my esteemed honor to warmly welcome you to today's career fair hosted by the Grenada Airport Authority in observance of the International Civil Aviation Development Day. The Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports and Culture is pleased to partner with the Grenada Airport Authority to heighten students' awareness 
on the varied careers in airport management and operations. Exposing students to careers in aviation and airport management offers numerous benefits, ranging from broadening their career perspectives to fostering essential skills and contributing to the overall development of a skilled workforce. I am sure that some of you here today may have dreamt of becoming a pilot one day. Raise your hand if you had that dream. All right. <laughs> However, aviation does not stop with piloting. Today's fair will present you with a wider range of available careers in the field of aviation that caters to various interests and skill. Whether you are interested in technology, management, engineering, customer service, or logistics, there is a role for you within the aviation sector. This diversity will help you explore different paths and find a career that aligns with your dreams and passion. Advancing innovation for global aviation development is not just a theme, it is a call to action. It beckons us to explore new horizons, embrace cutting edge technologies, and prepare the next generation for aviation professionals to navigate the, skill, the sky with skill, dedication, and innovation. To the students who are present here today, I urge you to approach this career fair with an open mind, grasp every opportunity to engage with the industry professionals, absorb their insights and and visual the exciting possibilities that await you in the world of aviation. As we embark on this journey together, let us keep in mind the transformative power of education and exposure. By broadening your perspective and providing you with a glimpse into the dynamic realm of civil aviation, we are sowing the seeds of an exciting future where innovation thrives and global aviation development ascends to new heights. The Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports and Culture, in collaboration with the Grenada Airport Authority, welcomes everyone to this career fair as you explore the various booths at the back. Remember that the aviation industry is not just about jobs. It's about joining a global community that values innovation, safety, and excellence. It's about being part of an industry that doesn't just keep up with times, but propels us into the future. I encourage you to ask questions, engage with the professionals, so that as you take your place, your rightful place in this industry, you will thrive as a new generation of professionals. On behalf of the ministry again, welcome and may your journey today into this exciting realm of aviation begins. Do have a great fair and welcome all. Thank you, Mrs. Thomas, for those welcome remarks. We now invite the CEO of the Grenada Airports Authority, Mr. Edgar Stevens, to bring us a message. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome our invited guests, along with our treasured students, to our career fair. Oh. This career fair um, is our effort as the Grenada Airport Authority 
to celebrate International Aviation Day. Um, we are doing this along with the Ministry of Education um, because we really do believe that the, the children, our students, are the ones who are going to take over when we, the airport professionals, move on. In that light, we've put together this fair, and what we are going to present to you today is the different areas in which um, we perform our tasks. So at, at the GAA, we have over 300 staff, and we manage two airports, um, the Morris Bishop International Airport, along with the Larriston Airport. And at this airport, we have various departments and various career opportunities that we would like to present to you today. Um, for example, we have our air traffic control department, we have a very large maintenance department, we have an IT department, we have customer service, we have finance, we have accounts. Um, the, the number of career opportunities are, are wide and far ranging. We thought that we, 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 we always celebrate International Aviation Day. However, we, we've not really brought it to the general public and to our most important asset here in Grenada, our students. So with that, we, we ask that everyone here join with us in celebrating Civil Aviation Day, but also coming in contact with some of the careers and uh, some of the opportunities that await you as you move into the job market. With that, I want to thank everyone who made it possible for us to have this event today. We want to, first of all, thank the Ministry of Civil Aviation for the support and the Line Minister, who is, of course, the Prime Minister. Um, we want to thank the Ministry of Education, who, of course, have been our partners in, in getting this event, um, making it a success, actually. And I want to thank the staff of and board of the Grenada Airport Authority in, in putting all hands together as a team to make this uh, event possible. With that, um, we want to make it about the students, so we invite you to visit our booths. Um, all of our airport professionals are on hand to answer any questions, and all the information you may need um, in order to make a career choice, we have it available to you. So we ask everyone to join with us again in celebrating International Civil Aviation Day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stephen. Now we invite the Civil Aviation Officer, Mr. Marlon Carter, to bring to us some brief remarks. Mr. Carter. Pleasant good morning, everyone. Well, on this day, uh, 79 years ago, countries around the world were faced with uh, a seemingly insurmountable challenge in transforming aviation globally. You see, up until that time, uh, aviation was primarily a military concern, and we're talking about the year 1944. Now, they wanted to transform aviation into a civilian resource that would encourage the development and peace around the world. Now, to chart the way forward with this historic initiative, uh, some 54 countries drafted the Convention on International Civil Aviation to promote cooperation and to create and preserve friendships and understandings among all nations. Now, on December 7th, 1944, this landmark agreement was signed by some 52 countries, establishing the core principles permitting international transport by air, and leading to the, special, the creation of the specialized United Nations agency known as the International Civil Aviation Organization, otherwise known as ICAO. Now, ICAO's core mandate then and today is to help states to achieve the highest possible degree of uniformity 
in civil aviation regulations, standards, procedures, and organization. And today, some 193 countries are ICAO member states, with Grenada becoming a member on August 31st, 1981. Now, since that time, Grenada has benefited immensely from ICAO uh, to implement more than 12,000 international standards and recommended practices with the aim of creating a modern international air transport network built on the pillars of safety and security. Now, as part of ICAO's 50th anniversary celebrations uh, back in 1994, on December 7th, 1994, the International Civil Aviation Day was established with the purpose of generating and reinforcing worldwide awareness of the importance of international civil aviation to social and economic development of states. And uh, this day also creates an opportunity for us to advocate for the safe, secure, and sustainable development of aviation, extending access to those who need it the most while ensuring that we do not compromise on fundamental values. So with the current theme of this year's International Civil Aviation Day being advocating innovation for global aviation development, we want to encourage you to consider joining the development of civil aviation right here in Grenada. And as you learn today about the many career opportunities that exist right here at home, we trust that it will inspire you to dream big so that you too can join us and experience a rewarding career in aviation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Our Prime Minister, Honorable Deacon Mitchell, and Minister for Civil Aviation would have loved to grace us with his presence here today, but due to the ongoing budgetary debates, he was unable to be here in person. However, he has prepared a special message for us. So I now invite you to turn your attention to the message from Honorable Deacon Mitchell, our Prime Minister of Grenada, Caracu, and Petey Martinique, and Minister for Civil Aviation. This will be followed by the GAA career video. Good morning, students. Every year, on December 7th, the world celebrates International Civil Aviation Day to recognize the importance and contribution of civil aviation and the profound impact it has on our global community. Today, we reflect on the incredible journey of human achievement in the skies. We reflect also on the triumph of innovation, the spirit of exploration, and the profound impact it has on connecting our global community. I want to take this opportunity to encourage you students to dream just as the aviation pioneers dared to dream of conquering the air with ingenuity and perseverance. From the Wright brothers' historic flight to the most advanced aircraft of today, we have witnessed an extraordinary evolution. Civil aviation has transcended boundaries, served as an economic catalyst, creating jobs, bringing people closer, and transforming the world into a more accessible and interconnected place. Let us appreciate the remarkable journey that has brought us to where we are today. Let us honor the pioneers, the engineers, the pilots, the passenger service agents, and everyone involved in making the dream of flight a reality. May we continue to reach new heights, not only in the skies, but also in the pursuit of the next breakthrough in the world of aviation. On this Aviation Day, I encourage you all to dream big and let your imagination take flight. The sky is the limit. Thank you.
So as I said previously, we'll now showcase the various disciplines at the Grenada Airport Authority, so enjoy this career video. My name is Edgar Steven and I am the General Manager here at the Grenada Airport Authority. The Airport Authority oversees and controls two airports, the Lariston Airport as well as the Maurice Bishop International Airport. We employ over 300 employees in such fields as firefighting, air traffic control, marketing, finance, information technology, among a host of other opportunities. We also work with airlines, ground handlers, and other service providers who also provide a large number of jobs in various sectors. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Occupational Safety, Health, and Environment Department. I am Kim McWilkin, the Health, Safety, and Environment Manager here at the Grenada Airports Authority. This department works to ensure the overall safety and well-being of everyone at the airport. The department is responsible for identifying and reducing potential hazards at the airport. We promote best practices in health and safety and ensure compliance with environmental regulations. Its dedication and expertise are essential in maintaining high standards of safety and well-being that we strive to achieve every day at our airport. I encourage you to consider a career in occupational safety health and environment as you could make a big difference in making sure everyone stays safe. You too can be the next Occupational Safety Health and Environmental Officer here at the Grenada Airports Authority. I am Glenn Forsyth, a Maintenance Manager at the Grenada Airports Authority. The Maintenance Department consists of six sub-departments. We have Electrical, we have Air Conditioning, we have Plumbing, we have building maintenance, mechanical, and you have grounds. All these sub-departments come together to support all the critical services and the infrastructure at the airport to ensure that we have safe operations and the place is cool and safe to operate for our passengers and the staff as well. I, as maintenance manager, encourage you to explore the possibilities of employment or a career in the aviation industry and in particular the maintenance department at the Green Area Airports Authority and of course we'll welcome you to be part of our airport family. My name is Siobhan Henry. I am a supervisor here at the security department at the Green Airport Authority. Our basic function is to ensure the safe movements of people, passengers and staff throughout the airport. We also handle the traffic and any other duties comes with it. We are the police of the airport. You too can be a part of the security team here at the Grenada Airport Authority. And CBS 416 clear for takeoff. Hi, my name is Brandon Clark. I am an air traffic controller at Grenada Airport Authority for more than seven years. Our role here is to speak with the pilots to ensure there is no collision between aircraft and to ensure that you and your family can get to their destination safely and promptly. You too can be a future travel controller here at Grenada Airport Authority. Hello, I am Kenisha Douglas. I am attached to the Aeronautical Information Services Department. Here at the Aeronautical Services Department, we are responsible for receiving and processing aeronautical information services, such as flight plans, notices to MN. We also receive and process payments for landing of aircrafts. You too can be an aeronautical information officer here at the Grenada Airport Authority. Hi, my name is Andre Charles. I'm a weather forecaster here at the Grenada Airport Authority. Here at the Met Office, there are several areas where we perform our duties. We have the entry level, which are observers, the mid-level, which are the technicians, and the senior level, which are the forecasters. At the Met Office, we provide a daily observation, briefing, and forecasting of the weather phenomena. 
the observers does a 24-hour shift where they provide data to the aviation pilots and the international market. The mid-levels, which are technicians, climatologists, applied meteorologists, they are specialized in providing reports to the general public and maintenance of our equipment. The forecasters, they are responsible for providing forecasts as well as briefing the public as to any hazardous weather condition that may affect the state of Grenada. At the airport, we encourage everyone to like meteorology and be a part of what we do here. And uh, you too can be a meteorological personnel here at the Grenada Airport Authority. Hi, my name is Frederick Kutin. I'm a supervisor slash driver operator of the appliances here at the Moise Bishop International Airport. We are responsible for aircraft and airport emergencies. Each and every person here has a very important and fundamental responsibility. But during emergencies, everybody has to respond effectively and efficiently at the same time. You too can be the next crash fire and rescue officer here at the Moise Bishop International Airport. Hi, my name is Alicia Thomas. I am a IT technician at the Grenada Airport Authority. I've been employed here for the past 12 years. My department consists of six persons, including myself as a technician, two other IT technicians, two database technicians, and one manager. Our roles are fix computers and help people with computer problems, keep the company's data safe, build networks by connecting all computers together, and making new computer programs. You too can become an IT technician by working hard, studying hard, and hoping to see you guys in the future at the GAA. Hi, I am Cecile Mitchell, the Quality Assurance and Compliance Manager here at the Grenada Airports Authority. At the Airports Authority, quality assurance and compliance is very important to the success of our business. The Quality Assurance and Compliance Department has a salient role in ensuring that quality is infused across every product, our premises, and most importantly, our people. So we ensure that our people are highly skilled, certified, and trained to execute their jobs, that our premises are well suited and compliant with the industry standards and our processes comply with all the standards and recommended practices as set by the aviation industry. Part of my job involves coordinating audits, maintaining corrective action plans and supporting the other departments to ensure that at every juncture of our business, quality is infused in what we do. Quality is not in the things that people do, but in the people who do things. You too can be the next quality assurance and compliance manager at the Grenada Airports Authority. Welcome to the Accounts Department. My name is John L. Phillip. I am a stores assistant. At Accounts, we are responsible for managing all the monies. We provide strategic information to different departments as to how best they can utilize their funds. And we also advise the CEO and the board members. We also procure items such as supplies that all departments may need. We're very important because without us, um, the airport cannot function as a unit. We take care of all of the purchasing, we do all of the brokerage as well here, and we ensure that everybody can get what they need here at the airport. It's a fun place to be, everybody enjoy themselves. You too can be a stores assistant within the accounts department here at the Guinea Airport Authority. Hi, my name is Dale McIntosh. I'm the Human Resources Officer at the Grenada Airports Authority. I've been with the institution for the past 12 years. The Human Resources Department is responsible for hiring of high quality staff, orientation, training and development, staff welfare, and compensation. You too can be the next HR personnel at the Grenada Airports Authority. The aviation sector is one of the most important and growing sectors in the world. The career opportunities are endless. If you're looking for an exciting and dynamic career, the aviation sector is the place for you. As an airport professional, I strongly recommend exploring job opportunities with the Grenada Airport Authority. Whoa, you would have 
agree that the aviation industry is a dynamic place to work. Would you agree? Great. So now we are going to take you into the meat of today's career fair, and you will be exposed to several presentations from different departments. The next three presentations will steer in this order. Met presentation by forecaster at the Met office, Mr. Fimber Frank. Then the next presentation will be from the Aviation Security Department, from Security Officer Mrs. Kiyomi Thomas. And the third presentation will be from our Maintenance Manager, Mr. Glenn Forsyth. So sit back and learn as much as you can. Fimba Frank. I have a slight switch between Mr. Frank and myself. I'm Andre Charles. I'll be doing a presentation for the Met Office. And Mr. Frank will accompany me in controlling the slides. Now, welcome to Green Airport Authority, Career Fair. And my position at the airport, at the Met Office, is forecaster. And here we present to you different things, rules, responsibility, and what we do at the Met Office. So here we're looking at meteorology. What is it? What it entails is the study of the atmosphere, atmospheric phenomena. Based on time, I'll just paraphrase, given the time we have. Now, all of these which we observe is all based on its interaction with the Earth's surface, the ocean, life in general. So we look at temperature, wind, all those other factors, parameters, and we would always give a report on how it links to these different Earth's surface, ocean, and life in general. Climatology is another aspect of meteorology that we also study at the Met Office is a long-term variation of the weather, and we look at how those long-term variation affects our weather and climate. So here we look at the variation of these, these phenomena is now affecting what we consider as climate change, climate variabilities. Now what is done at the Met Office? As we said, we have several departments within the, depart within the Met Office. We have weather observation. These are the entry-level technicians. We have the climatology instrument department, these are the mid-level technician, and we have the weather forecast and warning department. Now, with respect to the entry-level technician, this is the first level of introduction at the Met Office. So once we apply the Met Office, this is where you can come in most readily. However, you can also come in at different level once you have the requirements that is required for those different areas. So at the observer level, we look at the cloud, wind, temperature, pressure, rainfall, relative humidity, visibility. Now these are all the factors, parameters that we look at and we provide to the aviation and the general public on a daily basis. These factors that I just pointed out has to be monitored on a 24-hour basis. So the Met Office never closes, always operating. In hurricane, good weather, always operating. Now at the climatological department, the data that is collected on a daily basis, it has to be verified correct any errors, analyze, and then we generate different products that we can use to determine what would be the effects, long-term impact on Grenada, regional and international. Instrument department, now these guys are responsible for the maintenance of all the instruments, weather farms that we have operating through the island state, Grenada, Karakou, and Piti Matnik. We are, they are responsible for installing, maintaining, and supporting the online network of these different devices. Now, most of the instruments that is located through the island are automatic stations. So the remote sensing, and here we have how many of those? We have 37, which are the DVRP, Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Projects. And we also have the pilot program for climate resilience. Now, we have 10 of those stations installed through the island and 37. So in total, we're looking at 47 automatic weather station sta distributed through Grenada, Karakou, and Pitimathnik. Okay. So 
These are some of the instruments that we have at the Met Office. This here is called our Met Farm, and we see we have our uh, Stevenson screen, where we have the air temperature being recorded right here, wet bulb, dry bulb, relative humidity, all these information is gathered from this devices inside the Stevenson screen. Here we have our um, Campbell scope and uh, rain gauges. All of these things are located down at the Met Farm. Here we have our wind vane. This one is used to get the wind direction. And we say it's important, especially for the aviation personnel. So we have to give them the direction after where the wind is coming from, the wind speed, because we help the plane in takeoff and landing. The wind sock is also another instrument we use to get help in providing wind data to the air traffic control department. And this is our anemometer, which also is used to give us a more digital reading of what the wind direction is and the speed. Here is our Stevenson screen. Here we look at the temperature, maximum min and minimum temperature. We have a wet bulb and a dry bulb. And both of these combined together give us what we call relative humidity. Also at the Stevenson's at the Met Farm, we have our barometer, make record pressure, our barograph, which is our graphical record of the pressure, our sunshine recorder. As you see here, while the sun shines, this piece of paper here, which is placed under the canvas, the recorder here, burns as the sun moves over throughout the day. So we see throughout the entire 24 hour sunshine, sorry, we have how much temp the sunshine. What this will tell us? Cloud cover. So if it's a very cloudy day, then we can see that possibility at this point here, it became overcast, no longer sun shining, therefore no more burning of the recorder. Right? Here is our evaporation pan. Here we get how much the rate at which water leaves this pan and enters the atmosphere. And here again we have our rain gauge which measures rainfall, total amount measured in millimeters and inches. So the forecasting department at the airport we provide our daily weather analysis, we interpret numerical weather predictions, and we generate forecast and warning to the general public and aviation. This is just as a breakdown as to how we go about in our forecast. Normally you guys will be here in the Met Office talking about tropical waves, low centers, hurricanes. This is what the chart looks like on a daily basis when we're looking at those and analyzing. And Hurricane is one important factor that we look at. Remember the hurricane season begins June, ends November, and this is the different categories and strength of hurricane. For those of us here who would remember Hurricane Ivan, Hurricane Ivan hit us at the upper scale of the various categories. Category one, category five, we had wind speed as much as 155 miles per hour. And we all see the effects of what Ivan did to Grenada. So these are different products we generate at the Met Office. Our daily weather forecasting, bulletin that we use to help in providing the forecast. Yeah. This information here is what we call a METAR. That information is sent to the air traffic control department. The TAF is sent through the international and regional bodies. So a pilot, no matter where they are, they can see this information and help guide them as to the conditions at Grenada when they land takeoff. What you will observe also, these are just numbers, letters, no explanation. So all of these things is what you have to learn when you go at the institute to study meteorology. And all these numbers, letter, alphanumeric, yeah? Um, and this is our, another weather forecast product that we produced, and our warning bulletin as to hurricane, storms, any hazardous variables that were in Bar Grenada, we provide this here and send it out to the public. Some of you may have gotten those three phones from NADMA. We provide information to NADMA. NADMA sent it out through the island. Yeah? Now, the mid-level technicians, these are some of the products that they produce. Monthly analysis, breakdown as to what the month's weather look like, total rainfall, temperature, average wind speed, all of these things. We send this to the farmers, and they can use this to help in the planting of their crops, we also would have seen our heat wave warning, which we started this year, and this would have helped us in preparing how we go about our daily lives, how we should dress because of the temperature and the heat and humidity that we expect throughout the day. So, it's a car FM, and it's important for you guys to understand what are the requirements to work at the Met Office. Mathematics, English,
physics, geography, computer science. In the age you are going, computer science is very important, but one thing you need to know, you must have physics. Geography is important, yes, but without physics, it makes it difficult for you to get to work at the Met Office. So guys, put your brains in use and get your work done, all right? Um, this is where we go to do our studies for meteorology, Barbados, the Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Hydrology. Here is where you do the mid-level technician training course, the entry, mid, and the forecasting. However, you can go at the University of the West Indies or any other university in the world that, does, that provide a bachelor's degree in meteorology, climatology, and all those other applied meteorology programs. So, if you want to get more information, contact the Met Office. These are the numbers, and later on, we'll see you guys at the back so we can show you hands on what you do at the Met Office. Thank you. All right, so I believe our next presenter is the Air Traffic Service Department. Hold on, let me see, sorry. Aviation Security, sorry. <laughs> Aviation Security Department. And Kiyomi Thomas will be presenting along with Mr. Owen O'Neill. Lord have mercy, sorry. <laughs> The Board of Directors, Mrs. Anya Chow Chow, we welcome you to International Civil Aviation Day. We'll now continue with the presentation. Hi, good morning everyone. Um, my name is Kiyomi Thomas and my colleague, Mr. O'Neill Matthew, we are here re representing the Aviation Security Department, aka the police of the airport, right? Um, this is just gonna be a short, a quick rundown of our daily task and what we're about in the security department, right? It's a lot, so we can't really be long. <laughs> so what is aviation security? Aviation security is paramount to safeguarding lives, assets, and maintaining the integrity of the aviation industry. It exists to counteract potential threats and ensure a seamless travel experience for everyone. Right? What do we mean by that? So basically, what we do is that security is basically methods that are in place to ensure safe travels for passengers from one destination to another and for all airport users to have a seamless transaction, whether it's business or whatever the purpose may be. So we just there to ensure that everybody's safe and everything goes as smooth as possible. Right, we are the enforcers of the airport, right? Just like the police are the enforcers of the streets, we are the enforcers of the Morris Bishop International Airport and Lauriston. Now our main function is to safeguard civil aviation from acts of unlawful interference. And this is a, having a career in aviation security, right? What we mean by that is that we try to protect everyone, the building, the people, everybody, from any forms of any acts that might damage persons or the building, right? Now, when we say that now, this is an example. We have two examples, because they're numerous. But we have two examples of threats to civil aviation. Now, on December 22nd, 2001, Mr. Richard Reed here, he's also known as the shoe bomber. He boarded an American airline flight from Paris to Miami with the intention of blowing up the flight. How he did that? He had bombs in his, 
What do you think the bomb was? In his shoes, right? What spoiled his plan that day? It rained. So his shoes got wet. And because it got wet now, the passengers saw that he was trying to, you know, detonate something and they realized that what he was doing, so they tackled him and they were able to arrest him and he's in history as the shoe bomber. So don't get vexed with us when you're traveling and we ask you to take off your shoes. It's because of Mr. Richard Reed, okay? Here. Okay, so here, the other example, we have Mr. Umar Farouk Abdul Mutalab, AKA, AKA the underwear bomber, all right? It happened on Christmas day, so they also dubbed him as the Christmas bomber is a Nigerian terrorist who, at the age of 23, attempted to detonate plastic explosive hidden in his underwear. All right? So when we ask you to undress, take off your shoes, take off your, your jewelry, take off your... Divest yourself, it's because we had examples in the past, so we're trying to make sure that everybody that's traveling is safe and secure. All right? So the, he was caught because... <laughs> he was caught because... Uh, Passengers start hearing little noises and saw smoke and fire at the hem of his trousers. So they end up same tackled him and he was arrested and right now he is currently serving a life sentence. So don't try anything because you will get caught. Um, these are some of concealed weapons that can pass through. Uh, the airport. If you if you notice, I know too. if you notice, this looks like what? Right, but, right? The, huh? Yeah, this is a cell phone gun, right? It's a cell phone, but it also Detachable. and it it, it 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 can be used as a gun. This down here is what? A belt. Yeah? So when we ask you to take off your belt, this is why. Because at the end of it, you see what? A knife. Um, this is a hairbrush. But it's also used as a weapon. So, you know, persons are very creative in how they try to conceal items that can damage persons. So we have to be very vigilant on these, on these items. Right? So our daily tasks. Yeah, one of our tasks is conducting security checks on passengers, vehicles, baggage, and cargo. So everybody that requires access to the restricted area, they will be subjected to search. Yeah, physical, or you go through the, the walk through metal detector, your bags scanned, ensure that persons have proper identification, proper passes for the required places that they're seeking access to. So it's an entire process, but we're there to ensure that anybody that requires access has the proper requisition to do so. We monitor and operate security equipment to maintain a safe environment. So we have lots of cameras all over the airport, so don't think you could come down and do anything wrong. We're watching you. They have persons who, behind the scenes, watching and making sure everything is, is um, going accordingly, smoothly. We collaborate with other security and airport personnel to respond to potential threats. Um, recently, we had a security drill um, of an active shooter. So we were, we were reenacting what it would be like if there was an active shooter on the airport. So security was in place. We had to make sure that everything was going smoothly. We had to respond with CFR as fire. We had to respond with the RGPF. We had to respond with the drug squad. There's a lot, of, there's a lot to it, right? Um, just like everything else, you need qualifications to join the security team. And these are the qualifications you need. You, there's five subject passes, including English, equivalent to the GCE, um, three, grade three and above. You have to have a screener certificate, and Mr. Matthew would kind of expound on what the screener certificate is. So once you're chosen to come to the security department, there is an eight-week training period in classroom, yeah, where you 
thought about the ins and outs of what security is really about. Yeah? Give you a breakdown as to what, what persons can do, what is not expected, what... So you, you train. You're basically trained in the classroom, and then you go out onto the field, and you like, on-the-job training. Yeah? So you monitor you for that duration of six months. We call that the probation period, six months probation. And during that time, you allow to screen, you supervise while you're screening, ensure that you, got that, you get the hang of it, you're able to pick up objects on the x-ray machine, and you're able to identify stuff, right? So you'll be able to pick up on the prohibit items, what is allowed, and what persons are unable to travel with. Yeah? Upon completion of that, there's a screener test, and once you pass, you get the screener certification. That's the only how you're able to function at the airport screen by yourself. So without that certification, you can't be a security officer. So that's very important. Yeah? You also have to have the ability to ha communicate strongly, solve problems, and you also have to be able to be, um, have attention to detail and, re sorry, and remain calm under pressure. Ha, huh, pressure, because when you're dealing with traveling public and you have to take this stuff and, mm, it's a lot. So you have to be able to say, ma'am, sir, I'm sorry, but this is the protocols and you have to learn how to be professional. Don't get upset and you want to fight with the people, right? Personality and skills, well, it, it, it um, ties into the qualifications. You need to be vigilant, you need to be able to observe when people moving funny, why they walking so up and down, or how that man sweating so, them kind of thing. You need to be able to, you know, dependability because it's a team. The security department is a team, so you need to be able to be a team player. We need to be able to depend on you. Not when hurricane come, you are running home and say, nah, I'm how to take care of it. You need to be able to, you know, ban your belly and be with the team. Right? You need to be confidential because, and that's very important within the security department because there's a lot happening on the airport and you can't just bring out everything that happens at MBIA or Lauriston Airport. So you have to be able to be confidential. You sign a confidentiality clause. So whatever happens at MBIA, Lauriston stays there, right? <laughs> so these are some of the benefits of, in totality, working at the Grinnell Airport Authority, not just in the security department, because everybody is entitled to a pension plan, you have a nice little life insurance, health insurance, proper training, local and abroad, so you get to travel and conduct training with other counterparts in other airports, you get to network, it's a dynamic learning environment, all right? It's not a one-track thing. You can start in one department, you can start in the car park and you end up in the tower. You can start in the car park and you end up the manager. So it's not, you, there's ability to move forward. So you just have to have a, a, an ultimate goal as to what you really want to do. You can start one place and stay one place. I'm, I've been in security for 20 years. Yeah, and I think I look like some all inside here, young. <laughs> but yeah, so I love what I do, that's why. Yeah. Uh, we already expound on it, yes. There's a lot of opportunities to go in the field, sorry. <laughs> So don't be afraid. Join. You see? Watch out your nice uniform. Watch your nice uniform. Yeah? We looking dapper and saying, you know, don't, don't watch us say, you know, we just look profesh. So just stay in school, focus. Don't think of it as security. No, no, no. It's aviation security. Right? And we have a big task and big role and responsibility at the GAA. Right? So when you finish school, come on and check us. So we're happy to see most students joining us. Wouldn't you agree that this fair is exciting? Yes? Yes. So the next three presentations will run in this order. Maintenance Manager, presentation by Mr. Glenn Forsyth. Then a presentation by the IT Department, Mr. Jared James, and Ms. Alexandria Thomas, an air traffic controller will do the air traffic services presentation.
Thank you. Okay, good morning all. Okay, I would say morning again to the students particularly. Um, I see some keen interest. I'm, in, I'm being paid to what is being presented on the screen. So I'd just like to expound a little more on the maintenance department. Of course, earlier on, um, Mr. Uh, Stephen will have just given an overview of um, areas and in the visual presentation, you have seen various aspects of the maintenance department. I will just go a little more into um, the specific areas. Okay, this is, I think all you're on in the previous presentation, you've seen the conveyor belt. This is some work that is being done on our conveyor maintenance or conveyor system. Um, the department consists of uh, already six trades, um, fields and grounds. They particularly look at the external areas, the grounds, basically to keep the vegetation maintained, one would probably want to ask, why do you need to maintain the vegetation? As simple as it is, apart from just beautifying, we are required to maintain, for example, the vegetation along the runway edge, or along the strip, at a particular height. That is again in keeping with the International Civil Aviation Organization. Mr. Carter would have mentioned, that Grenada was a signatory to that convention back in uh, 1981, I think, or 83, 81. So a lot of these guidelines that we are implementing, and I just would speak, for example, the security department a while ago, would have uh, touched on the importance um, of maintaining safety and all that. And all these things are not just happening because we want to. We are mandated to do it with the intention of creating a safe environment, a safe airport, and we need to be consistent with all the international standards. Okay, the mechanical department, as it says mechanical, we are responsible for the maintenance of authorities' vehicles. Some of these vehicles are not just the regular pickups that you see on the road. We have specialized equipment, for example, or fire fighting and um, uh, response vehicles, they are to be kept at the particular standards. There are procedures that ought to be followed. Um, similarly, the plumbing department, when you come to the airport, you want to ensure that your washroom facilities are well kept. Um, the entire water distribution system. Again, as simple as it is, we are mandated to have a certain quantity of water in storage for emergency response. So for example, these checks ought to be done daily. And we, the, the information is not just checked. It is captured, documented, and recorded to ensure that we can keep a track of what we do, when it's done, and how it's done. The buildings department, of course, we want to ensure or ensure that the facility is kept up to a certain standard, which includes some of the extended areas. We do have facilities up at the Granite Tank, for example, that support uh, air navigation services. Um, we would ensure that these um, facilities or infrastructure is maintained and properly kept. The, when you come to the airport, you want to ensure that the, 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 the building is, looks aesthetically pleasing, the, 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 the doors function well, the building is properly painted. Um, as you have an ongoing facility, of course you require things to be changed at, you know, at your home. You'll probably see over time you'll have to change doors, change windows, 
Beautify, I guess you probably know this time of year is Christmas, everybody's painting. Beautify, similar kind of support. Um, the electrical and AC department combined here for this purpose, but um, of course the air conditioning department is again uh, another critical area that we, because not just the terminal, but airports are generally for the persons who have been exposed to travel before and the upcoming, you probably would experience it. Airports are generally cool, they're kept cool. You want to ensure that passengers and other staff as well passing through the facility is made comfortable. Um, there are specific equipment. Um, example again, I would just want to go back to security just to show how maintenance is critical in supporting other departments of the facility. There are certain screening equipment, for example, that should be kept in some controlled environments. So the, our responsibility is to ensure that equipment is well maintained to support the proper functioning of the, some critical equipment. The electrical, of course, we, I think we know how the importance of electrical is. And again, I will go back to say, I don't think any other departments that is has presented or we've spoken about today could, could properly function without electricity. So that's a key area, and we do have some specific areas again with respect to electricity. I would say the airport is the only infrastructure you'll find on the island that you'll find runway, runway lighting. It's a specialized area, specialized training. Um, and the importance of runway lighting, again, is critical to the function of the airport. You don't have lights, you do not have night landing. Based on our current schedule, especially as an international airport, you'd want to ensure that you have night landing. Night landing comes with runway lighting. It's a specific type of lighting, as I said. Um, training is available um, for that, so not necessarily locally you get to the opportunities to um, travel to get that specialized training. So of course, um, the, even the distribution system, the power distribution system is a little bit unique. Um, that is an area, of course, that you can look forward to, not just explore, but look forward to gaining meaningful uh, employment um, at, the, at the airport's authority. Okay, um, that's... Uh, the analysis of it. As we know, um, skills training or trades to me in the region has one of the areas that is in dire need. We do have a shortage of skilled personnel throughout the region and uh, probably greener to, 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 to a larger extent. And I know a lot of focus at times is on the ac academic side. I am not saying no. Of course we do need the academic qualifications to be part of um, the maintenance department. However, I think as a people or as a region going forward, we need to focus a lot more on our skills training. Unfortunately, some of these opportunities are not readily available on island. Yes, you will go to the, the tertiary institutions, but actually skills training centers, I know that's part of the dream going forward intention is to create more skills training opportunities so that from secondary school level, um, you can find your niche if you're not into the science per se, you go to the technical side. And I'm sure, if not just locally, regionally, you will be able to find employment in that technical field. So I, I strongly urge you to consider it. And I'm sure if you stay focused, um, the opportunities will come and opportunities for development will come. And I do hope that my presentation would show you that as an airport and the other presentations will show that each one is interlinked. The hand, the body needs a hand, the eye, the mouth, the nose to function as one unit. And if we collectively do that as one, of course, which we are trying to do, the airport is going to be a proper functioning environment. The, the benefit of the airport, of course, it brings a lot of financial gains to the state. It's one of the major investments that we've had. So again, I implore on you to consider aviation or the airport environment as a choice that you can um, pursue going forward. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. No. Um, my name is um, Jared James. I am a junior database and application officer at the Airport Authority. Um, I've not too long started, and throughout my journey at the airport, I was thinking it's just going to be um, a computer not working. Can you come and fix it? But <laughs> throughout the, uh, my experience, it's much more than that. Um, so we do fix computers, don't get us wrong. But we also keep the company's data safe, which is very important for um, the financial aspect, the traveler's data aspect. We make sure that these things are very secured from the hackers and everything that we all know from the movies. Um, we make new programs at the airports use internal, the airport use internally, such as sending out like specific rosters and all these other things to save on costs. So don't think that you have to always go and download something. At the IT department, you will get the experience and knowledge needed to build your own program, your calculators, and all these things that you would learn as you progress in the field. And we also maintain networks, that is the communication of the computers, in between throughout the, the various departments so that everyone can communicate effectively and we don't have any slow communication because it is very important that all the, institute, all the departments communicate effectively in case of an emergency and also in, just in general to have a nice smooth flow in airport. Um, the jobs that we have in the aviation industry offered at the authority include the IT manager, the systems administrator, the uh, IT technician, and the database and application officer. Um, some of these vary in like in levels, such as the IT technician, you will have your, your senior technician and your junior technician, as well as in the database and application officer aspect, you will have your senior and your junior. Um, the IT manager is the head of the department. He is very crucial in communicating with all the other managers to, in, to ensure that all their needs and all everything that they need to function is met. So he would he would go around and ask and do his various questionnaires, his various surveys to find out if anybody needs anything technically wise, and then he would report back to his department to find out if there are any things that we can do as a team to, um, to ensure that we can fix all these, all these um, issues. The systems administrator is the supervisor of the department, not the manager, the direct under the manager. And he is mainly like, responsible for the networking aspects of the, of the authority. He is, very well, he is very well versed in all the other fields, but his main Main objective at the authority is to make sure that the networks are very up to standard and very intertwined so that all these things can happen effectively. Um, the database and application officer, myself, we, um, we design the databases that store all the data. We also run a lot of queries throughout the day to, um, to give to the various departments, such as um, for the maintenance department, for example, we run the queries to see how many, um, as we call them, P POs, uh, PMs have been done. Um, no, not POs, POs is accounts. But um, all the work orders, that's right, the work orders that they do throughout the day. Um, we also enhance the, we also train users on how to use the databases that we, uh, that we, um, that we build because we do tend to build quite a few on a day-to-day -day basis. And then we obviously have to stay up to date with the technology because it's a very, very fast growing field and every, every company is trying to stay in front and be very more creative with how they do things. The IT technician is the person you call when your computer is not working. This person, is, this person has to be a very friendly, outgoing person because from day-to-day -day basis, you will not find that my computer is not working. Other times, you might find the IT spoil my laptop. You might find that the IT department sabotaging me. So you have to know how to communicate with these people. And you also have to have a very wide knowledge on the technology that's going around. So you have to know about the new graphics card that comes out, the new um, CPU that comes out. You have to know how to 
interact with these technologies because at the various departments, they might not as well know and they might not be as tech savvy as everyone else. Um, the IT team uses a lot of tools. This one here is the, um, we call it the $8,000 fluke. This one is just a very expensive piece of technology that helps us carry out our day-to-day -day basis. It tests, it's a cable tester, it's a network tracer, it helps us to find out which ports are on the server and which, whose computer is whose. Um, we also use remote, um, remote desktop tools to help us communicate so we don't always have to walk around. We can stay in the department and connect to our computer and, you know, see what's going on at their system instead of actually having to do all the walking and everything like that. Um, the requirements, it might seem like a lot, because it is a lot, it involves a lot of hard and dedicated work. Um, it could have the associate's degree in IT or related fields such as information systems, computer science, and these types of fields like this. Um, the bachelor's degree, more for the senior position such as the senior database officer, the systems administrator, and the IT manager one day. The um, certificates also go a very long way because these certificates in this field now, um, seeing that most of the fields, a little advice, seeing that most of the, the schools or universities these days, which is not bad to have, they are more focused on the, the theory side of things, but these jobs are more hands-on and these, these certificates offer more practical use. So companies are now looking for people who can show and apply their knowledge and having projects, having building a lot of projects on your own free time if you're looking to go into the IT field is a very helpful and desirable skill to have. I thank you. I will be at the back at the end when the boots are open for any questions that you guys may have. I now invite, <laughs> I think it's the ATS department. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Alexandria Thomas, and I am here to represent the ATS department, which stands for Air Traffic Services. And under our department, we have both um, aeronautical information services as well as air traffic control. All right, I guess we saved the best for last. So I would consider air traffic control probably the heart of the airport. Of course, without the help of all of the other departments, nothing would be possible, all right? But if we don't work, we don't have planes coming, right? So our role, without boring you, is basically to guide planes and get them on the correct routing. Um, basically, the police of the sky, you know? We're the voices that you don't see. So we're normally in the tower up on the hill whenever you travel. Right, so some of the requirements to join the ATS department would be pretty much the same as most of the other departments would have stated. You know, you have to have five CXC passes minimum. You can have more. You would need English, mathematics, physics would be an asset. Um, two other subjects and geography would also be an asset. Right? After you would have finished your secondary education, if you decide to move on to college, then that would also be great. After you would have done that, you would apply to the airport and they would do maybe an initial training with you, basics, and then they would send you off to Trinidad, to the Trinidad and Tobago Civil Aviation Authority, where you would spend the next nine months of your life undergoing a very intense training that's also compact, to learn everything you need to learn for air traffic control. Right, but don't be scared. It's, if I survive, you could survive too. <laughs> right, so it's normally a theoretical aspect as well as a practical aspect. So in Trinidad, we have the simulators. So it's simulated to look like a tower. 
with all of the big screens and the TVs, we work with planes, we actually do have crashes in the simulator, we've had quite a few, <laughs> um, not in real life though. Um, we do our theoretical exams, we do all of those, then we come back to Grenada, or wherever you may choose to go after, I'm hoping it's Grenada, and you undergo your on-the-job training, which could range from about six months to a year, just dependent on you, where you'd also do theoretical aspects of it, because you would have to learn your local instructions, your letters of, letters of agreement for this airport. And then you would go upstairs to then start your practical aspect, which would be where you would gain your hours and become a bit more confident and comfortable in your role as an air traffic controller. Of course, every year we do recurrent training, meaning we do proficiency exams where we could either do it simulated or live, meaning you use the actual traffic and do your exams. Simulated would be we sit in the classroom and we would have two of our assessors, which would be the manager and the assistant manager currently, that one would act as a pilot and one would be grading you basically, listening to how you handle your situations and if you know your approaches, if you know what you're supposed to do, because of course we have procedures for everything. We have our VOR and our NDB. Uh, VOR stands for um, very high frequency omnidirectional range, very big word. And then we have the NDB, which is the non-directional beacon. So right now at the Grenada Airport Authority, we mostly use the VOR sometimes. They would do the RNAV approach. We have different approaches. They could do visually, meaning they use sight, to come to the airport. So once they get to a certain level, they will tell you, um, I'm inside with the aerodrome, I can see your aerodrome. And then we would, of course, once it's safe and the weather permits, we would clear them and say, okay, clear for visual approach, runway one zero, clear to land, you give them their winds, you give them everything, and they would use sights, of course, to avoid all terrain and everything else to land at the airport. It can be fun, but sometimes it could be a bit nerve wracking because when we have bad weather, for example, or what we would say conditions that are below visual met meteorological conditions, it could be very difficult because you can't see anything. You're working with just your brain and what you know about the airport. And the thing about our job is that we have to work very quickly. We have to think very quickly. So you have to have a certain level of skill set when it comes to critical thinking and working fast. You cannot crumble under pressure, I would say, because as the security presentation stated, you have to learn to remain calm in every single situation. Just like how in security, if somebody comes in with a bomb, they can't panic and decide, oh, I'm going to leave the airport. You know, we have to stay. There are cases, and we've had cases in the past, where an earthquake is actually happening, and you have to finish working. You cannot leave the tower until that plane lands or until that plane gets to where they need to be. You have to stay, right? It doesn't happen often. Don't be scared. Right, so currently in Grenada, we are responsible for 30 nautical miles of airspace. So that's basically the road in the sky, if you want to simply put it like that. And at the back, I have my diagram with the routes. It might look a little complicated, but that's just the roads that the pilots have to follow, the imaginary roads. And we guide them to the different areas they want to go, whether it's Trinidad, Barbados, St. Vincent, Cariacou, etc. right? So the fundamental knowledge that you will probably come across when you enter the ATS world would be the phonetic alphabets. I'm sure that some of you may have heard it before. For example, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, you know, those are the alphabets that we tend to use down there. Why? Because it reduces ambiguity. And for example, when we have foreign pilots, it can be difficult with them because English isn't their first language. So you do that to avoid any accidents or anything else. UTC, which is Universal Coordinated Time, that is what we use in air traffic control and, well, basically in the entire aviation industry. It's a time that's set. So the time is set for all airports, same time, and this is the time that we use. So our time, it's four hours ahead. So for example, if the time is now 10 o'clock, it would be two o'clock UTC. That's how it would generally work. But we have clocks, so you don't have to actually calculate it. But when you go to school in Trinidad, you actually have to learn how to calculate longitude and latitude based on time and degrees, right? So we use abbreviations, of course, because we can't literally write everything out longhand, and because you have to write so quickly, you won't have the time. 
We have our location indicators. So there's normally a four-letter indicator that we use for every airport or aerodrome. For example, our indicator for Grenada is TGPY, and that's what we would use. Carico is TGPZ, that's for Carico. Trinidad is TTPP, Tobago is TTCP, St. Vincent is TVSA, etc., etc. Um, as I spoke about the routes already, which is the imaginary roads that pilots have to follow when we give them their instruction or when we give them their clearance to go to where they're going. We have the aircraft types, which we kind of have to be familiar with as many as possible, or mostly the ones that come to your aerodrome. For example, we have the ATRs that come for Caribbean Airlines and, well, LIAT. We have the Embraer 120 that comes for Inter-Caribbean. We have the American, the Airbus that comes. We have the Boeing for Virgin, as well as British Airways, etc. So you kind of have to be familiar with your aircraft, as well as your wake turbulence categories, because that helps you with your separation when aircraft lands to prevent any accidents, right? So as I said, we are responsible for 30 nautical miles of airspace. Anything after that is Trinidad or Piaco. We have runway designators, which is runway 10 and runway 28. So we basically have two runways. And these runways interchange based on the wind because the runway designators come from the wind direction. So once the wind changes, a pilot can decide, okay, I want to use runway 28, which means sometimes you might see them coming from the direction of Container Park, and then, of course, most times we use runway 10, so you would see them coming from the other direction, or sometimes you see them coming on the western side and coming up this side. And our adjacent aerodromes and airspaces currently, well, we have, of course, Argyle, which is north of us. We have Adams, Grandly Adams, which is Barbados, which is more east of us. We have Piaco, which is Trinidad, which is south of us. And that's pretty much the aerodromes, and we have Carico, of course, that we are also responsible for, that we tend to deal with currently. Right, so this is just a representation of what our airspace looks like. So you see the TGPY, that's us. This is what our airspace looks like. Then we have St. Vincent, you see the little area that they have. So everybody has their piece of sky that they're responsible for. That's your property. You have to deal with anything inside, <laughs> right? So the importance of ATS, so air traffic services to the GA, um, mainly to prevent collisions, um, to expedite and maintain an orderly flow of traffic in the airspace and on the ground, um, to provide advice and information useful to the safe and efficient conduct of flights. And we use, you have a question? Okay. Okay, so for those of you that may not have heard, he asked, what is the likelihood of a plane crashing, planes crashing mid-air? Right? Very good question. The likelihood is slim once the pilots follow instructions. So, again, we're the sky police. So we are to ensure that they do what they are supposed to do. So sometimes we have radars. Well, we don't currently have one in Grenada, but Piaco has radars that normally we will call them and we say, okay, listen, we're looking for this aircraft. And again, it comes in useful when we have emergencies because they are, they are the response coordinators for this um, information region, right? So normally one of the procedures for when you realize that two aircraft are going to collide head on, the instruction is both aircraft alter your head into the right. So this is what would happen. They would both turn to the right. So one will go this way, one will go that way. And then that is how they would avoid each other. And then of course you would separate them. So the point I was going to make after that is that we use separation standards that of course come from IQ that we have to follow when we're doing forms of separation. So we have, okay, it's not there. We have lateral separation that we use, which will be side by side. We have longitudinal separation that we use, and we also use vertical separation. So above all else, the first thing you have to have before anything else is vertical. All aircraft are separated by a thousand feet. So you see now why it, they shouldn't end up in a situation where they would collide. But sometimes, again, with foreign pilots, because English isn't their first language, it may be difficult for them to understand an instruction, which is why we have the phonetics, because then we will spell it out for you and we will slow it down. But, of course, we have the ADSB that we would use. And sometimes, I mean, yes, you don't use it to do your separation, but sometimes you can monitor aircraft using it to ensure that they did follow the instruction or carry out the instruction that you gave them. 
And of course, if you have same direction aircraft, you would never allow them to depart at the same time because they cannot um, assume the same level at the same time. If you have somebody that just popped in into your airspace, just randomly, of course, we will, con we will coordinate with Piaco, which is Trinidad, and we would ask them, okay, are you aware of this one? Do you have a flight plan for this one? And of course, that's where our AIS team comes in because they would also make some phone calls for us because we do have procedures that we follow. We have a list of people we have to call when we have emergencies. And AIS is normally responsible for assisting with filing of flight plans, no times, which is notice to airmen. So that's basically pilots getting a a tweet or a little post while they're in the sky, you know, we send them a message while they're in the sky and that's how they would normally get it or they would get it when they have their briefings before flying, right? So please don't think about aircraft. Oh, yeah, so the rate of accidents as our operations manager is saying is a lot lower or less than those on the ground. We don't really have accidents, well, in Grenada I can say we don't really have accidents like that. We might have a little, you know, aircraft might slip off the runway because they probably turned a little too wide, you know, things like that, but it's nothing major. And I know some of you might be curious about the thing, the incident you saw a few weeks ago with the aircraft in the water. I don't know if anybody saw that one or heard about that one. If you didn't, great. <laughs> then, but the persons are both alive and they're well. They went back to where they came from. Um, so the products and services that we offer, um, we have the aeronautical information publication, which is the AIP that we normally use, and that's where we get all information on our airspaces, runways, the operating hours, all your frequencies, and of course it's accessible to the general public. So if you have free time, you could probably just Google, you know, the AIP, and you could look for Grenada's particular one. But there's for all the countries that are governed in the Eastern Caribbean. We do flight planning, we do no terms, we have charts and maps, of course we do separation. We have advisory services, we use navigational aids, we communicate, we have pre and post flight bulletin. Um, what governs us, so what governs the ATS, and I'm part of the airports as well, because of course we fall under ECA, which is our Eastern Caribbean regulatory body that of course, when they come and say, hello, you need to jump, it's time to jump, because if we don't, then they will close us down. So we do have standards that we have to keep up. So an airport is not just, oh, let me throw down a building and have planes. No, there's a lot of standards and there's a lot that happens behind the scenes that persons don't understand. Because, you know, your passengers, you might get angry about something, as they said, in security, but it's not our fault that, you know, this is something that we have to carry out. We also use annexes. So currently we have 19 annexes, which are basically books or Bibles. And we have document 4444, that is the Bible of ATC, that governs us and every single thing that we do. All our standards, all our recommended practices, everything comes from ICAO and our annexes. We have our manuals, we have our safety management systems, we have our MANOPS, which is our manual of operations for locally. We have our PANS, which is DOC 4444, and we have our standards and recommended practices that comes from ICAOs as well. Um, possible careers. Well, of course, obviously, air traffic controller. Um, you could become an aeronautical information service officer, as they stated in the video. When you, become in, when you come into air traffic control, of course, there are levels to it. So you start off as a cadet, which I am. Then you go up to a CO1, move up to CO2, move up to CO3. Then you can become a supervisor. You can also become an assessor, which that is the person that's basically an invigilator. So when you have proficiency checks, so we have exams, this is the person that would sit in and they would take the notes and they would ensure that, okay, this person did what they are supposed to be doing. Then you could become an instructor. So we have a few persons actually currently doing the instructor's course, we, meaning that you're the teacher. So you teach us and do refreshers in the classroom. And of course, once you stay away for more than a month, once you come back, you have to do a refresher training, meaning you have to go back in the classroom again. And then we, you could also become the manager, assistant manager. Um, you have on the job trainer, meaning that when you finish in the classroom, after you get back from Trinidad, you can also train persons that, or cadets that just got back to help them gain their hours. Um, I guess it's a stepping stone toward being a pilot as well, because when I did my course, I had somebody on there who was a private pilot, and a few of my instructors actually had their private pilot license. So of course, most of the stuff we do in ATC relates to pilots, and it helps them get a better understanding of, okay, why we do what we do, how we do what we do. Um, 
you could become a cartographer, and yeah, there's a lot more that you can go into. And this is what our setup in the AIS office looks like currently. And so you see all the screens with all the screens where we would look at, this is our ADS-B that we would look at how the aircraft are moving. Well, this one in the AIS wouldn't have the aircraft on it. We have the one in tower for that. And then this is where they would use to do their flight planning. This is where they were putting all the flight plans, the data, and of course, as I say, processing and dealing with underground stuff. This is our setup in the tower. Well, this is just the console. So, of course, we have a 360 view of outside because we need to see everything that is happening around our airport as well as on the ground. And it's not just for planes, it's as well as vehicles. So, you know, we have our maintenance staff moving around as he, suggests, as he said that they have to cut the grass around the runway and all of that. So we have to ensure that, okay, a plane is coming, we need you to get off or when the plane lands, okay, you can continue. When um, IT and everybody has to go out and do their checks and all these other things, they would have to, of course, ask permission first before they can enter the active runway. They do, we do our runway inspections twice daily. We do one before airport operation starts, and we do one in the evening time, probably around six o'clock. And this is also to ensure that there's no debris, anything loose or birds, because we, we do have issues sometimes where, you know, when the migration season is about that birds tend to be in the approach path and sometimes the aircraft will suck them in and kill them. So we normally have to go out and take them up. Of course, once a pilot reports to us that they had a bird strike or that they think they hit something, we have to go out and check to ensure that there's nothing on there that can cause an accident. Um, if we had heavy rains, for example, especially during the rainy season or the hurricane season, we normally have to do more regular inspections because, you know, crabs and worms and all these things that encourage live stock to come out, then we have to do that. Security also does their checks for the perimeters to ensure that there's nothing there or no breaches can happen, right? So. This is where we would normally see our information. This is what we use to see the aircraft moving around. We have our mics someplace on there. This is our crash alarm phone, so if anything, we call fire. Um, we have our, this we use to get the winds. These are our strip holders. This is our active console bay. So when we have an aircraft, we have different color strips that we use to um, differentiate between them. I do have a lovely presentation in the back that I set up for you all. So I have some strips back there to show you. And I also tried to make it as juicy as possible. I actually made a 3D model of our runway and I put some planes, compliments of the <laughs> operations manager. She gave me her planes to borrow. Um, so I look forward to your questions at the back and thank you. You would agree, those were some great presentations. We thank all the presenters. Now, the other presenters will have three short presentations from the drug squad, from pilot Duncan Kirby, and from an air tech. The drug squad will come now. Good morning, everyone. I am Richie Maxime, Detective Constable at the Drug Squad. Not necessarily right now. Good afternoon, everyone. It's morning, it's morning sorry. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> My name is Constable Fortier St. Louis. I've been a part of the RGPA for five years and a part of Drug Squad for three. Apologies. I've been a part of Drug Squad for 10 years. Today, we're here to speak about our functions at the airport, teaming up with the aviation security. <laughs> First of all, who can tell me what this is? Anyone? Can anyone stand up and verify if it's an actual drink? A drink? 
Lovely. What's your name, sir? Don't be afraid. Don't, don't be shy. M Martin? Matteo. Can you go on from Matteo? Come join me. Yes, no problem. <laughs> Come on. So everyone is convinced this is uh, Arizona, right? Pull it, feel it. If I. No juice in it? Okay. <laughs> Who said twist it? Okay, thank you very much. Yes? Twist it. Come twist it. No problem. Take a twist. Inspecting it? Quite solid. Yes, yes. Lovely. And what do you see? Is that Arizona? No. Nah. Okay. It looks like cooking. <laughs> <laughs> it's marijuana. These are the techniques people use to evade the security at the airport. That's where our functions come in. Yes? Our function at the airport is to investigate all those smugglers who try to traffic in and out illicit drugs, cash, firearms, ammunition, bombs, anything that is illegal they try to escape with, we would find it. The drug squad, the aviation team, security. We will find it. And it helps when we have persons on the airport as well doing these things. Yes, because these smugglers, they tend to be crafty as you are seeing here, yes? So, I'll turn you over to... My colleague. Okay. So, our team at the airport Good. contributes to national security. Together with the security team, AKA the airport police, the rifle the airport police. So, with border security, we can enjoy a safer country, economic growth, and a higher standard of living. But on the other side, if there is no border security, no airport police, or drug squad at the airport, nobody securing the airport, we cannot enjoy a safer country. And without a safer country, tell me what we're affecting. What the biggest economy we're affecting? You're saying? Tourism. Tourism generates the biggest, one of the biggest revenue generators is tourism in our country. So, if the country is not safe, gun related crimes go up, drugs crime go up, people not come to our country. I think mostly in Grenada, somebody is working in the tourism industry. If they lose their jobs, what's going to happen? We cannot enjoy a higher standard of living. Mommy can buy books, mommy can buy the nice shoe you're wearing, mommy can provide for you. And that is the problem we're having. Because when these smugglers tend to go out, they put the drugs and their money and whatever illegal substance on their body. They carry it in their luggage, they carry it in their articles, just to try and evade. For what? Basically nothing. As you will see on our next slide, there's a dog sniffing a bag. A police dog sniffing a bag. And they don't just sniff bags like that. You see how focused it is on that bag? It's because there is something in that bag. Something that caught its interest, its sniff, its smell. You know how dogs work, yeah? They sniff all over the place, but when they catch that smell, they stick on it. And that's what we train our dogs to do. As you can see on the other side, a police officer holding a brick-like image. That's cocaine. That is what was found in that bag, hidden in a compartment in that bag, trying to trick the security who will check that bag. But because of our specialized training, we get to find it. Because of our specialized dogs, we get to find it. And when you get here, when you get with us, when you get with our team, you will get that chance to train with us, train with dogs, travel, and do these things that we do 
Can anyone tell me what fruit you see there? <laughs> what fruit? A yes, a melon, a watermelon. So you can see that the smugglers are very tricky. You can see that watermelon is carved out. What drug you can see there? Yes, weed, <laughs> marijuana. <laughs> so the marijuana is placed inside there and it's covered back, it's sealed. See where training comes in again? It puts security, drug squad. Training comes in that the officer is able to detect that the marijuana was hidden inside there and find it. The next slide, next picture, what do you see there? What about the shoe? What's there? What do you think is inside there? Yes, cocaine is hidden inside there. So that's how smugglers traffic the drugs out of the borders. So there come again, airport security, drug squad, the training, we're able to detect and keep our borders safe. Now as we spoke about body earlier, you see a guy on the left hand side, well, my right, strapped up with duct tape and something like what we saw earlier, the brown like package around his waist, around his body. Now he is doing that to evade the security as he travel. Because he wouldn't just be going out like that. Bulk up with his clothes, look like if you go into a cold country, so nobody would suspect. Yeah, this big, what do they call these jackets? Winter jackets? Yes. So nobody would suspect that. But because of our training, I mean, we will see these things. Certain techniques we learn when we train will give us the insight as to what this guy might be trying to do. Even the internal vision, as you see here, right? This is an x-ray of a person. And as you can see, the tiny little ball inside there, these strange looking objects. What do you think these are? Now, pellets, small, round cocaine wrapped in latex that they cover with honey and swallow. Sometimes they go with 80, 90, 100. They swallow it in, they walk through the security, walk on the airplane, fly out, and then they release it. As you see these down here, close to coming out, they release it to make the money. Unfortunately, not all the time it works. And when I say not work, but it, it turns out badly. As a few years ago, there was an incident that occurred on the airport where a guy came in to do that same illegal transaction. Took in the cocaine, he swallowed it, and about to leave the airport. And he was there waiting to head out and because of the training our officers had, we realized that something was off about that man. Yes? So, our officer decided to go and speak with him. Ask him if he ingested anything illegal, narcotics or so, and he denied it. Now, we have experienced these things before, as the officer has mentioned before. We have experienced these things, we have seen these things, we are trained with these things. So, for better, for, for better means of everybody else, we would, we would try to help you, we would try to make sure you're safe. So we will come to you and speak with you. But we spoke with him and he denied having anything in him. But because of our training, we decided to take it further. The guy was detained and we decided to check his insides by bringing him by the, the hospital, do an x-ray. On doing the x-ray, this is what we saw, something similar to these. Unfortunately, the time we did the x-ray, it was too late. A uh, pellet, little pellet, bus, the cocaine was inside, inside him. Not in the latex anymore, but inside him. And he died, unfortunately so. So, it's unfortunate that happened, but that's what we're here for. We're here to help. We're here to protect. Yes? 
not just to prosecute you or arrest you. We're here to help you. Things might be hard, things might be tough. That means you have to get yourself into, into smuggling, into transporting these things. Because when you do get yourself in a tight situation and these things happen to you, what would you be thinking about in your last minutes, seconds of life? Would you say, hey, I could have made a lot of money? Or, wow, what did I get myself into? Think about it. Is it really worth it? A few hundred, a few thousand dollars? What is the price you can put on your life? Think about what could happen to you. Think about it. So while you're thinking on what, type, what side of the fence you'll be on, there's two sides. You either decide where you eventually end up in prison or dead. Or you can join our side. Em employment, help with your family, married, have kids. So let's go to requirements to join our team. Age range, 19 to 25. You must be applied and accepted into the police training school, education, a minimum of four CXC subjects, including language. You always have more. If you have four and you started off, elevate yourself. Be recommended by a member of the team or a senior police officer. And also, no criminal record. So you have to stay out of trouble. So as you hear, no criminal record. But you know there's a fun set of it. We get to travel, we get to have fun. So stay in school, get your subjects. Learn and focus on the positives. Yes? Get to be outside there. We get to train with the DA, the FBI, the CIA. Yes? You don't want to get yourself involved in the negative side of life. Yes? So I thank you everyone for listening to us. And I really hope that you focus and keep positivity up. Thank you, guys. So we will quickly hear from the pilot and from a rep from AirTech. Good morning, everybody. And my name is Duncan, and I'm one of the local pilots at Morris Bishop. And what I want to talk to you about this morning isn't about all the pathways that you can take as a professional pilot. What I want to talk to you about is the most difficult aspect you're going to face, the most difficult challenge you're going to face when becoming a pilot. And that difficult challenge is just getting started. So let's get you started right now. I want to ask you a little show of hands from all the young people here. How many of you kind of thought you might like to be a pilot at one point or another? Just crossed your mind? Well, this young man for sure, definitely. So there we have a couple of, you know, you could put your hands up. We got some people, and I know some people are a little shy about it, but you can put your hand up. What I want you to do next, those of you who put your hands up, I got one guy who won't put his hand down, he's so excited. What I want you to do next, if you put your hand up, I want you to ask yourself the next question. The next question is, do you think you have the physical skills to be a good pilot? Now, you're kind of thinking, well, I don't want to show off here or anything, but I think I can probably do that. But the next question is probably the most important one. It's the vital one, and that is, should I be a pilot? And that's a very different question because I'm, I'm going to tell you what I saw when I was on my way this morning. I was driving through traffic, and there was a gentleman ahead of me on his scooter, and he was very skillfully driving with one hand, and in his other hand, he was operating his cell phone. And he was mu moving beautifully through traffic. And I thought, wow, that guy is very good. He's got skills. So do you think that guy would be someone capable of operating an aircraft, given all the skills that he's demonstrating here? I've got some people that are kind of thinking, well, he, this guy seems like he's pretty good. 
Well, what I saw next was that as he was bounding along and he's operating his cell phone, there was a pothole up ahead. And whew, at the last moment, he swerved, went off balance, and just barely caught himself. No doubt the man was skilled. He was beautifully operating that thing, but who's the better pilot? Is it the one who uses amazing skills to cheat death, or is it the one who manages safely to avoid the problems in the first instance? So what I'm asking you to consider is not your physical skill, because yes, you have to be physically skilled to fly an airplane, but most of being a successful pilot boils down to your ability to make good decisions. So I want you to think about that when you're considering really any of these amazing careers that we've been presented with today. Every single one of these professionals has to basically exercise good management of their decision-making faculties. So that is the message that I want to bring you here. Now the other thing too is I saw there were a few people who were a little shy about putting their hands up. Those of you who are women, young women in this group, do not be afraid to put your hand up if somebody asks you want to be a, if you think you can be a pilot, because some of the most amazing pilots that I know are the young women. Um, I know, let's see, one of the most incredible pilots, she actually learned to fly an airplane before she knew how to drive a car. And she's now piloting a 737 with Caribbean Airlines. Very young person. Someone that I was in flight school with, she just breezed through flight school, she became a pilot of a jet for an air carrier, and then she decided, this is not really what I want to do. What she's now doing is she's flying fighter fighting, fire fighting aircraft. She's the one landing the aircraft on the lakes, picking up the water, dumping it on the fires. She's amazing. I also had the honor of being associated with the second woman ever to fly a U-2 spy plane. So do not let anybody tell you you cannot do this. Be interested and proceed. Now the last thing I want to tell you, I'm going to be quiet, I get my speech coach here is giving me the nod here right now, but what the last thing I want to tell you is being a pilot, if, you're, if that's your aspiration, that's not an end point, that's really a beginning. I want you to think big and broad and don't be afraid to take on one, more than one expertise. Because I don't know if you know this about me, but my actual day job is I'm a professor of neuroscience at St. George's School of Medicine and in that capacity, I want you to be thinking about how could I think big here? So think about careers such as becoming an aviation medical examiner or an aerospace physician. Think big and always make great decisions. So I'm gonna turn things back over and I hope to meet you at the back in a short while. Take care. Good morning, everyone, students, uh, faculty, and esteemed guests. I am here, um, I work at the airport. I'm an aircraft engineer. I'm attached to AirTex. So on behalf of AirTex, my manager, who is Mr. Declan Ashton, my colleagues, we'd like to wish you a happy um, International Civil Aviation Day. <clears throat> Um, like all of my colleagues at the airport said, um, aviation is a, an ecosystem. It's many different departments coming together to support one cause, which is either, you know, shipping cargo, passengers, or even dreams. Um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what I do. Mr. Duncan here, which is a pilot, whenever he comes, back from a flight, he would call someone like me or my colleague there, Adriel, and he would say, well, um, we have an issue with this tire or an issue with the engine or whatever. So we are basically mechanics for aircraft. We ensure that they're safe before they leave the ground and when they come back. And all these equipment that you hear about from air traffic control, from the uh, information services, these aircraft, these equipment are embedded in the aircraft. So it's not about, uh, it's not just about mechanical, it's about electrical. We deal with instruments, we deal with radars. So if you're a young man and you have interest in engineering, or a young woman, you have interest in engineering, electrical, any aspect that is technical, I implore you to, um, 
pursue a career in aviation maintenance. Um, I must say that when I was in high school, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but someone came up with an initiative like this, and it kind of spurred me into a direction that, you know, I can stand here and, and inspire others. So I'd like to commend the Grenada Aviation uh, Airports Authority, Ministry of Education, and, and this initiative, I think it, it will do a, a good job in inspiring the youths, and I think, um, you know, we should continue to, we should keep it up, so thank you. You have truly been an amazing audience. I hope that you learned a lot and were able to build an appreciation of some of the careers in the aviation industry. Unfortunately, we could not have showcased all today. But we have some boots at the back and should you require more information, then you can stop by to learn some more. Today we celebrated International Civil Aviation Day under the theme, The Sky is the Limit, Soar into Your Career at Aviation Horizon. At this time, we invite Mrs. Christina Joseph, the Director of Operations at the Grenada Airports Authority, to bring to us the vote of thanks. Mrs. Joseph. Thank, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I, I will stand on protocol already established. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, students, pleasant, good morning to all. It gives me an immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for this important event on behalf of the Grenada Airports Authority, GAA. I would like to start by wishing all my respect to the educators at all levels that day to day prepare the students and professionals for the world of civil, avi civil aviation. I would like to thank our Honorable Prime Minister, Deacon Mitchell, Minister for Civil Aviation, for his career message and continuous support in the development of the civil aviation in Grenada. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I would like to thank the following speakers and participants. Ms. Mrs. Natasha Thomas, District 6 Education Officer, Ministry of Education, for the welcome remarks, thank you. Mr. Marlon Cutter, Civil Aviation Officer at the Ministry of Civil Aviation, for his great remark and industry insight, thank you. GA CEO, Mr. Edgar Steven, for your opening statement and the overview of the Grenada Airports Authority. Thank you. Pastor Lambert Paul, who delivered the opening prayers and inspirational uh, thoughts. Thank you to him. He already departed. The, organi the organizing team for this event, a joint collaboration between the GA the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Civil Aviation. What started as a small plan evolved into a grand event that is happening simultaneously at all four locations in our country, including Caricou. Thank you, organizing team. To all the presenters in this event and to those who work behind the scenes to prepare all the presentations and material that were displayed here today. Thank you. To the principal and staff of the Grenada Boys Secondary School for allowing us to host the event here today. Thank you. To the media houses for the continuous support in covering our event and assisting us at the GAA in promoting our work and our services. Thank you. 
to our great student uh, audience here today. Thank you, I will look forward to welcoming you in the field of civil aviation. To our virtual audience that is following this event for, support, for supporting our work at Morris Bishop International and Lauriston Airport, thank you. To all the stakeholders and supporting agencies at Morris Bishop International and Lauriston Airport, I am mentioned the stakeholders, airline, ground handlers, aircraft maintenance, refueling, operators, etc., service providers, duty free shops, operators, food and beverage, janitorial, a Grenada Tourism Authority, taxi operators, car rental, to the border protection agencies, immigration customs, port health, plant quarantine, RGPF. Drasquad, thank you for your presentation here today. All working together, we thank you for your dedicated work in delivering safe, secure, and efficient air transportation services for Grenada. Thank you. Thank you, and do have an international, a happy International Civil Aviation Day. Thank you. Yes, but well, th that ends our presentation today. So we now invite everyone to patronize the booth in the back so you can familiarize close and personal with the service with the technical people with the professionals in the various areas of aviation thank you All right.
All right, and uh, we'd like to say hello to you, those of you who are out there still. Um, Civil Aviation Day is celebrated today, and of course, the Grenada Airport Authority. Hi, you good? You good? You had a good day today? Yes. Yes, what did you learn? Not that much. We're just relaxing in school. Oh, okay, okay. You know, sometimes uh, the kids, they are here watching the pictures and just listening. Um, she said not that much. Um, it's it's kind of like an idea of getting young people um, thinking in the in the direction of uh, aviation, um, whether it is that you want to work at the uh, Grenada Airport Authority and the different disciplines that they offer. And that's what it was about today. And so we've heard a lot about some of the areas of uh, um, uh, expertise um, that you can get involved in and it was quite interesting I guess as much some of us ne never knew that there were so many different departments there were so many different uh, departments um, down at the uh, at the Morris Bishop International Airport so that's what we learned today and uh, and uh, folks uh, we are going to uh, probably uh, talk to a few students here we are at the Grenada Boys Secondary School hello all right, we are at the Grenada Boys Secondary School. Uh, the session was up for about a two-hour uh, period. We had uh, pilots, we had police officers, we had people uh, from the Met office, we had persons from the maintenance department, and of course they spoke to us about what it is um, that they do down at the International Airport, the Morris Bishop International Airport. Um, so we will probably, um, you know, have a conversation in a while. So that's the maintenance department and they're here. And of course they're handing out brochures and so on, giving people an idea as to what it is, oops, what it is that they do, all right? So they have a nice little brochure here. <coughs> you're responsible for the plumbing, the buildings. <coughs> we also heard that they're responsible for the AC and the electrical um, work down at the um, Morris Bishop Interna International Airport, all right? So that's the maintenance department. And then we have, uh, we have the pilot. And uh, the pilot, well, you know what the pilot does. He had, there was a nice little conversation with the pilot this morning. Then there's the information uh, technology department. He's responsible for the networking, responsible for not sabotaging them people's computers. You know, that, that's one of the things I find happen a lot. When you talk to IT departments, right? Um, the, the, the employees and the staff complain about the IT department. They sabotage my computer again. And I guess you experience that a lot. Yes, we um, we've had some instances, but um, for the confidential for confidential reasons, no, that doesn't happen at the airport. Everything functions according to plan, all the time. Very funny. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. All the time. All right. Um, so earlier on, you were giving us an idea as to some of your roles, responsibilities of the IT department. Uh, a very um, detailed uh, process, I must add. Yes, yes. It's, um, so it's, as, as I said, you know, some of these things have to, um, have to go into consideration with um, the qualifications that you also have. So making sure that you mix and match, you know, try to explain to the kids so that they know exactly what to focus on to get in order to be whether they want to be in the field being a technician or at the desk being a database officer. It, it, it tends to help them, you know, see which, which career they want to um, pursue. When you, were, when you were in school, in secondary school, did you think that you were going to get to the level that you're on now? Um, when I was in secondary school, no. Um, actually, I was, in, I was actually in, um, pursuing business. And one day I, I happened to um, find out how much um, business the I, I, information technology gets on a day-to-day -day basis. So having that, seeing that kind of helped me switch over and made that choice that I wanted to be in the information technology field. Uh, all right, and all the best. Thank you. Same to you. All right. Well, you see some of the other departments, they're pretty busy here. I think this is the air control department. I mean... If you can, if you want to gauge the interest, you can see the areas that are more populated, all right? So this area is very dense. That is the air traffic services department. So you see there are a lot of interest over there. You know, they want to be able to tell the plane come in and go, you know, go left, go right. Um, then we have also metrology. That is my favorite department. If I have to get a, 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 a you know, employment at the airport, I probably will want to be part of the Met services, all right, because my passion is in weather, weather forecast, being able to predict, to analyze, and to inform where weather is concerned. And so, 
um, you hear and they, so you see the, the students are being shown some of the instruments uh, how the instruments work the barometer the weather sensor the rain gauge and all of that right <coughs> let's go across here <coughs> this is the quality assurance and compliance department of course again making sure that uh, things are on a certain level all right right and then um the, the students are expressing their interest in the quality assurance and compliance department it was a very educational session i must say it's been very very educational entertaining because you know if it was boring um people were not gonna stay on and so it, it was very detailed um, very information informative all right all right and then we also have the security the security department they say they are the, they are the police of the um, <laughs> the police of the airport of the airports so we've got the security department and you see some of the tools that they use some of the instruments or tools or whatever you want to call it that they use to ensure that there are no breaches of uh, security you know people tend to use smaller countries and more vulnerable countries to smuggle drugs you know illicit drugs um, and, 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 and those sort of uh, banned substances but uh, with proper security measures those plans will get foiled and so here we have the security department they are also responsible for um for uh, clamping your wheels for the traffic outside you know <laughs> maintaining a proper flow of the traffic uh, as well so they've got the security department to do that then over to my left again a lot of interest here that is the drug squad of the royal grenada police force they are demonstrating um, ways in which people conceal um, drugs or banned substances so they are explaining those things to the um, to the students now Air traffic services, meteorological services, human resource, accounts, uh, marketing and promotions, uh, aviation security, quality assurance, information technology. Um, those are the areas of opportunity for you, well, persons who are looking for opportunity of employment. Those are some of the areas in which you can explore. All right. It's a very good idea to have the job fair. It's a very good idea to help the students, I hope you, think in the direction of employment. <laughs> yeah, we have, a, we have a lot. Okay, we have a lot. We have a lot of people on that table there. Um, let me, um, soon we will talk to one of the officers. Yes, but, um, you know, it's good to have these sessions so that students can start thinking in the direction of a career path. You know, sometimes we go through school and we, we, we care little about what we really want to be. We just go and our main aim is to get five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven subjects at some at distinction levels. Um, but when you ask some students, do you know what you'd like to be? They're like, mm, maybe a doctor, and they're saying that because of what their parents are, but because what, that's what people say. But when you ask the second question, what have you done, or what have you been doing to, um, to you know, like, to niche into that particular direction? What are you doing to get closer to achieving that objective of becoming um, a doctor, a lawyer, a pilot, a security guard, a plumber? They will tell you, well, nothing yet. So these sessions um, can actually help students start thinking in the direction of a career path. And you can see clearly um, 
based on where you see the students are that some of those areas pick their interest all right so that's what it's about let's see good morning sir um what what is one of those called it's a handheld metal detector it's a handheld metal, and so that's what you use on the airport to make sure that we don't have knives and weapons and stuff exactly exactly so persons coming through the walkthrough metal detector when it goes off we use this instrument to figure out where on the person metal is and then we do a hand check to verify what is the, the cause of the alarm so that's how we check to make sure that persons enter in the sterile holding area that's where you sit down and wait for the aircraft to depart you do not come into inside that area with any equipment metal or, or weapons that will cause an act of unlawful interference um do they do these things detect your rings uh, your jewelry and coins and so on as well yes it does i, I can demonstrate it on you okay okay right right Okay, all right. And so, do people get uncomfortable with you using this on them? No, no, no. They, they, they don't. They, they willingly um, allow themselves to be checked, especially um, you find persons wanting to travel. Of course, they want to go, so they want you to do what you've got to do to ensure that um, they get they safe. Then you have the other instance where persons would thank you for doing what you have to do to make sure that they're safe and other persons entering the flight with them is safe also. Great, yeah, that will be assuring for somebody who's not very sure, you know, when they see how thorough you are, they'll feel safe because they know they have nothing to worry about. Absolutely, and as we would always say to them, if you don't know anything, do not be afraid of anything. We're doing what we have to do to make sure that you're safe and make sure other persons traveling is safe also. All right, great, thank you. No problem, you're welcome. All right, great. Oh, wow. <laughs> So metal detectors, so you see there, and they're happy to know that you are you. Um, these are being used because you know everybody wants to be safe, all right. And um, okay, okay, let's let's do a demonstration. Let's do a demonstration. Do I have to? So do you ask questions like, sir? Do you have any any weapons or? So usually when you travel, there is an area where you would um remove all extraneous metals on your person so we'd ask person do you have any cell phone keys coins on your person can you take them off place it in the container and then step through the metal detector when you step through and your alarm goes off the alarm goes off then we ask you to step back are you sure that you cleared yourself yes i am and you walk through again then we test to verify so it might be that you have a chain on it might be that you have a watch on or a band on that caused the metal the, the watch metal detector to alarm we verify by using a combination of the pad down and the handheld metal detector to verify. So for the camera and for the, 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 viewing, sorry, sorry, sorry. the viewing audience, we'll just do a demonstration on Mikey so that you can see how it is done. So we'll ask the passenger to kindly separate your legs and extend your arms. It's my car keys. Just the car keys. So we go back to make sure it's just the car keys. The pocket is empty. There's no alarm. So we to make sure that there's nothing is concealed in the ground area because it's an area that persons may use right. to conceal items. Okay. You can make noise. <laughs> and then we go to the back. The so you have a cell phone in the back of the telephone. Yes, sir. Thank you. I will. <laughs> Coins. <Yeah. laughs> right. Thank you, Kylie. Have a good flight. All right. Thank you very See much, you sir. Come back next time for the Christmas. All right, sir. Thank you. <laughs> so basically, that's just a brief demonstration how we do it at the checkpoint to ensure that persons do not enter with any metallic item that may harm others or do any damage to the aircraft. So that's just a brief demonstration what we do at the airport at the security department. All right, thank you very much for the demonstration. You're most welcome. All right, so we have a demo and uh, with quite a lot of people by the drug squad. We probably will go back to the drug squad in a while. We have the quality assurance. And can you, again, briefly tell our cameras exactly what are the roles and responsibilities of the quality assurance and compliance department? The aviation industry has many standards and regulations that ensure the safety and security of the aviation industry. 
Now the Quality Assurance and Compliance Department is responsible for maintaining customer trust and satisfaction and ensuring that these standards and recommended practices are maintained across all of the operations of the Grenada Airports Authority. Some of our roles will include coordinating audits, ensuring that corrective action plans are prepared in a timely manner, and also checking to make sure that all of these plans, the actions are taken that are necessary to keep our airport safe and secure, and most of all, to assure our customers of our mandate to protect and provide excellent services. Thank you. <laughs> wow, that sounds like a speech. You know, that was so professionally done. Done. I can't even ask any further questions. It was so thorough. And so now we have a clear understanding as to what it is that you do. Thank you, Mikey. And it was so great of you to cover this event. I. We have lovely brochures and what we want to do is to encourage persons to come to the airport or you will see contact details at the back of the brochures because obviously we could not have shared all of the careers with you today. But the aviation industry is very dynamic and we want our young persons to get involved. We have only showcased some of the disciplines. So every time you come to the airport, remember what is our mantra that we are promoting quality products and services to ensure that our customers remain satisfied. So thank you. All right, thank, you. <laughs> thank you very much as well. All right, so many, many, many disciplines um, that you can explore um, in the aviation um, department or the aviation, uh, okay. Uh, yes, so we're getting up. Okay, thank you very much. So we get an additional brochure and one for the cameraman as well. Right. Ah, I don't know about that one. He's not switching. He's going to stay here. <laughs> yeah, but thank you very much. <laughs> and she's trying to steal my cameraman away from me. <laughs> cameraman, what says you? <laughs> um, so, yes. Uh, you, you know, you, you, can, you can call any of the numbers, as she was saying earlier, um, and inquire about um, working in the industry. Okay? So, well... Yeah, but it plays full, it plays well full, yeah. But again, I see a lot of interest, med services, uh, air traffic control, um, security, drug squad. Information technology again, IT is very important. Uh, the pilot is, has a nice little build up happening here now. All right, so yeah. So this is what it's all about. So folks, um, it was a nice session held here today at the Grenada Boys Secondary School. And so we hope that uh, you will be able to share this live with someone. Share it with someone to at least let them understand what it is that, that, that um, happens uh, at the airport from inside out. There was so much information that was uh, disseminated this morning and so if you have a student in your home it might be a good idea to explain to them what it is that the um, air traffic control department does, what it is the um, quality assurance department does, what it is the maintenance department does, what it is the security department does. Yeah? Wow. So look at the students. Look at the students. They are, they are so in, in, intrigued by what they are being told. You see things in, oh, and there's marketing as well. There's marketing. There's aircraft technician. All right. So yes. So here you have the marketing department as well, and uh, um, we are and human resource as well. So there's human resource. So, so many different departments, folks. So many different departments. So you see what's going on here. The human resource department. They have the nice little display going on there. All right, so folks, um, we are just about 
um, getting ready to, you know, I would like to speak to one of the students, but at the same time, I do not want to deprive them of um, their little session with um, the representatives, you know what I mean? I think the, the in-person, like the one-on-one -on -one sessions are really important. Um, so I, I, I really don't want to interrupt that. But of course, um, by all the indications, the session was well received, appreciated, and uh, the students are now taking the opportunity to learn even more, you know, and have their, uh, their questions answered. All right. So folks, uh, we, and we have students not only from the uh, Grenada Boys Secondary School, but we also have students from the Presentation Brothers College. I saw um, some other students here, Wesley College students as well. So it's not just, yes, the event has been hosted at the GBSS, but there are students from other secondary schools. Also, this event is also happening simultaneously at other secondary schools around the island as well, in St. Mark's, etc. All right, and so it's happening simultaneously. This one here is being televised and being brought live, um, but there are others that are happening around the island in a similar fashion. So, folks, this is where we're going to wrap it up for today. Say thank you again for viewing, and please, please, please share the live with someone. Share the live with someone so that they can learn what we learned here today. It was a really, really, really good session. So, from um, the, the entire team, Grenada Airport Authority team, um, the Mikey Live team, uh, all the students here, we say thank you uh, for being here with us and do enjoy the rest of your day.